Okay, uh, it's been a while, I always say that since I did a video. <laughs> um, Texas has been crazy here. Um, 2015, um, last part of April going in all the way through May. Uh, this is the last week of May here. It's been raining um, almost every day, guys. Just amazing weather. Jet stream has come down into Texas and just dumped rain on us for an entire month. Um, I live in an area, which I'm not gonna mention where, um, in an area that we didn't get any flooding, and I thank God for that, but uh, I feel really bad for the people in Houston and Austin and even some parts of San Antonio. It's just been crazy. So a lot of people affected by a massive flooding. Uh, but anyway, on to the project. Um, you'll notice I have this uh, bad boy kind of torn down a little bit anyway. Sprockets are off the main shaft. Okay, chains are just, the video's picking up, but they're just kind of hanging there. Hanging on the back of the, just kind of hanging there for now. Weight's disconnected. Sprockets are from the transfer shaft. That's one of them, and there's the other one. Anyway, um, you'll notice I got five pieces of tubing there. Two little ones on the right, and three larger ones. Hold on one second, guys. Um, so this is called DOM, uh, drawn over a mandrel. It's it's a little pricey, but it's really good, sturdy material that you can work with. And um, I had to. This is two inch outside diameter with one inch inside diameter hole. And my transfer shaft is one inch diameter, so I was hoping that when I bought this, that this would just fit right over it, but of course it didn't. So I had to spend some time honing it out a little bit, which I had to go old school, because you guys know I don't have a lathe or a CNC machine or any of that, so it was a round file on a stone and I got it done, but, and then also I had to uh, drill and tap some holes for a set screw to go on the end of that shaft or you know go into that shaft so anyway the whole plan here is that uh, this finally fits over the top of it got that on there sorry it's hard to do all one-handed but anyway this this would line up with the with the keyway and then the set screw I messed up on one hole <laughs> had to redrill it but anyway finally got it worked out set screw goes in here and a set screw goes in there and it, and it meets it will meet the uh, Keyway. And why? Why am I doing all that? I can just hear everybody saying, why would he do that? Well, in the previous video or two, I talked about deflection in the shaft here, and it was pretty significant deflection. I actually uh, measured it uh, when, boy, this lighting is just terrible. I'm trying to get this to focus here. I was getting deflection pretty bad right in this area because that's where the uh, main wheel is, the winding wheel. So I had a lot of deflection right here. The shaft was bending. I me actually measured it when it was under load. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was enough to create a, a big problem with the chain. Way too much slack in the chain and just, you know, big problems. And the math, uh, I got into the mathematics. I talked about that. And, uh, and the mathematics confirmed the deflection uh, within very close numbers. So I, I knew that deflection was real and that uh, Sure enough, the one inch material here. It's got a problem at this length. This is a, a over five foot piece of material here, almost six foot. So there's a couple different ways you can deal with. You know, you, you could support this shaft, uh, kind of like what you do in a, in a engine block with a crank shaft and uh, engine ca type caps and all kinds of things you could do there. And, and but that's very expensive. Okay, that'd be a really big change in design. So, through some mathematics, deflection mathematics, I uh, decided to give this a shot. And what I'm attempting to do is basically increase the overall diameter of this one inch piece of material by simply sliding over this DOM tube. Now, you might be asking, why didn't you just get a bigger shaft? Well, 
this is two inch diameter. So first of all, to get a two inch diameter shaft is very expensive. We're talking hundreds of dollars. Okay, I mean you're, you're talking four or five hundred dollars. Very expensive material. Okay, and that's just not within practicality of trying to keep within a budget of a, a project. You know, um, and two, it's very difficult to find um, sprocket holders like what you see in the middle of that sprocket there. That's called a sprocket holder. They would accommodate two inches. Um, they do make them, but they're also very expensive. Again, you're talking hundreds of dollars. So as soon as you get above one inch in the sprocket world, things become very expensive really fast. So for the sake of avoiding crazy expenses and costs, we're going to give this a shot. And the, the whole idea and premise here is that by increasing the diameter of, of this um, tire shaft to two inches, that the deflection would get down to the point to where it's... Um, acceptable range of deflection. So that's, that's what I'm after, an acceptable range of deflection. Um, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> I have one piece done and four pieces to do. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work. So, uh, <laughs> boy, I could sure use a lathe. That would be nice. A little carbide uh, cut cutter on a lathe and I would have this done in you know a fraction of the time but that's life when you're starting out small all right guys uh, the video's already long I just wanted to let you know where I'm at hopefully in the next week or two I have all these pieces honed out um, and have them on there and we'll see what kind of deflection we have and I'll run another video all right guys thanks for hanging with me uh, as always and um, peace out